equivalence partitioning. And that one is kind of splitting uh, or dividing this input data into many partitions. So, um, and we need to check each partition at least once. So taking the same example, um, so we don't want to test like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 18. But then imagine after 56, are you going to go like all the way to like million or so, right? No, it's like million test cases, no way. So that's why we just pick one number, uh, any random number between basically 0 and 18, right? So let's say like 5, for example, and we will test that number assuming that the rest of the numbers within the same partition will behave the same, right? And that's it. Um, the same for um, the second one partition between 19 to 56, we can pick any, any number, let's say 40 or 30 or 25, doesn't matter. Something in between and 56, the same thing. We can pick like 76, for example. So that's how we will test uh, the partition itself. So, and that's what we're gonna do for regression. So we will, we will try to find um, some um, uh, partitions and we will do both like boundary testing and partitioning. So just with this simple example, are we supposed to test at least three plus three for boundaries? So six test cases, and then three values for partitioning. So nine test cases just for this simple thing. Does it make sense, guys? Yeah. And it's not the only one. Imagine um, in some, for, uh, for example, um, like tax brackets, for example, right? There is a special schedule that shows you like how much, how many, <clears throat> what's the uh, rate for you is going to be. For example, if you make less than like 36,000 a year, then it's going to be like this amount of money. And then for the next 10,000 this and, and for the next another one. Imagine how many test cases you will need to write to test all of that. So if you really want to do your job uh, properly, you have to do that that will give you a confidence that yes, it's all tested out. There's no gonna be surprises when it comes to your tax returns, right?